December 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Nahum, chapters 1 through 3 of the Old Testament. The Oracle Against Nineveh, the Book of the Vision of Nahum, the Elkoshite. The Lord is a zealous and avenging God. The Lord is avenging and very angry. The Lord takes vengeance against his foes. He sustains his rage against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, but great in power. The Lord will certainly not allow the wicked to go unpunished. He marches out in the whirlwind and the raging storm. Dark storm clouds billow like dust under his feet. He shouts a battle cry against the sea and makes it dry up. He makes all the rivers run dry. Bashan and Carmel wither. The blossom of Lebanon withers. The mountains tremble before him. The hills convulse. The earth is laid waste before him. The world and all its inhabitants are laid waste. No one can withstand his indignation. No one can resist his fierce anger. His wrath is poured out like volcanic fire. Boulders are broken up as he approaches. The Lord is good. Indeed, he is a fortress in time of distress, and he protects those who seek refuge in him. But with an overwhelming flood, he will make a complete end of Nineveh. He will drive his enemies into darkness. Whatever you plot against the Lord, he will completely destroy. Distress will not arise a second time. Surely they will be totally consumed like entangled thorn bushes, like the drink of drunkards, like very dry stubble. From you, O Nineveh, one has marched forth who plots evil against the Lord, a wicked military strategist. This is what the Lord says. Even though they are powerful and what is more, even though their army is numerous, nevertheless they will be destroyed and trickle away. Although I afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. And now I will break Assyria's yoke bar from your neck. I will tear apart the shackles that are on you. The Lord has issued a decree against you. Your dynasty will come to an end. I will destroy the idols and images in the temples of your gods. I will desecrate your grave because you are accursed. Look, a herald is running on the mountains. A messenger is proclaiming deliverance. Celebrate your sacred festivals, O Judah. Fulfill your sacred vows to praise God. For never again will the wicked Assyrians invade you. They have been completely destroyed. The watchmen in Nineveh shout, An enemy who will scatter you is marching out to attack you. Guard the rampart, watch the road. Prepare yourself for battle, muster your mighty strength. For the Lord will restore the majesty of Jacob as well as the majesty of Israel. Though their enemies have plundered them and have destroyed their fields. The shields of his warriors are dyed red. The mighty soldiers are dressed in scarlet garments. The metal fittings of the chariot shine like fire on the day of battle. The soldiers brandish their spears. The chariots race madly through the streets. They rush back and forth in the broad plazas. They look like lightning bolts. They dash here and there like flashes of lightning. The commander orders his officers. They stumble as they advance. They rush to the city wall and they set up the covered siege tower. The sluice gates are open. The royal palace is deluged and dissolves. Nineveh is taken into exile and led away. Her slave girls moan like doves while they beat their breast. Nineveh was like a pool of water throughout her days, but now her people are running away. She cries out, stop, stop, but no one turns back. Her conquerors cry out, plunder the silver, plunder the gold. There is no end to the treasure, riches of every kind of precious thing. Destruction, devastation, and desolation. Their hearts faint, their knees tremble. Each stomach churns, each face turns pale. Where now is the den of the lions, the feeding place of the young lions, where the lion, lioness, and lion cub once prowled, and no one disturbed them? The lion tore apart as much prey as his cubs needed and strangled prey to provide food for his lionesses. He filled his lairs with prey and his dens with torn flesh. I am against you, declares the Lord, who commands armies. I will burn your chariots with fire. The sword will devour your young lions. You will no longer prey upon the land. The voices of your messengers will no longer be heard. 
Woe to the city guilty of bloodshed. She is full of lies. She is filled with plunder. She has hoarded her spoil. The chariot drivers will crack their whips. The chariot wheels will shake the ground. The chariot horses will gallop. The war chariots will bolt forward. The charioteers will charge ahead. Their swords will flash and their spears will glimmer. There will be many people slain. There will be piles of the dead and countless casualties. So many that people will stumble over the corpses. Because you have acted like a wanton prostitute, a seductive mistress who practices sorcery, who enslaves nations by her harlotry and entices people by her sorcery. I am against you, declares the Lord who commands armies. I will strip off your clothes. I will show your nakedness to the nations and your shame to the kingdoms. I will pelt you with filth. I will treat you with contempt. I will make you a public spectacle. Everyone who sees you will turn away from you in disgust. They will say, Nineveh has been devastated. Who will lament for her? There will be no one to comfort you. You are no more secure than Thebes. She was located on the banks of the Nile. The waters surrounded her. Her rampart was the sea. The water was her wall. Cush and Egypt had limitless strength. Put and the Libyans were among her allies. Yet she went into captivity as an exile. Even her infants were smashed to pieces at the head of every street. They cast lots for her nobility. All her dignitaries were bound with chains. You too will act like drunkards. You will go into hiding. You too will seek refuge from the enemy. All your fortifications will be like fig trees with first ripe fruit. If they are shaken, their figs will fall into the mouth of the eater. Your warriors will be like women in your midst. The gates of your land will be wide open to your enemies. Fire will consume the bars of your gates. Draw yourselves water for a siege. Strengthen your fortifications. Trample the mud and tread the clay. Make mud bricks to strengthen your walls. There the fire will consume you, the sword will cut you down, it will devour you like the young locust would. Multiply yourself like the young locust, multiply yourself like the flying locust. Increase your merchants more than the stars of heaven, they are like the young locust which sheds its skin and flies away. Your courtiers are like the locust, your officials are like a swarm of locusts. They encamp in the walls on a cold day, yet when the sun rises, they fly away, and no one knows where they are. Your shepherds are sleeping, O king of Assyria. Your officers are slumbering. Your people are scattered like sheep on the mountains, and there is no one to regather them. Your destruction is like an incurable wound. Your demise is like a fatal injury. All who hear what has happened to you will clap their hands for joy, for no one ever escaped your endless cruelty. God, we see the book of Nahum uh, coming after, obviously, uh, the book of Jonah, when Jonah was sent to warn Nineveh, and much to Jonah's surprise and frustration, as we learned, <laughs> uh, the Ninevites actually listened to him and, and turned around their ways and, and sought you, God. And I love that story. It's kind of a couple different stories in one, but I love how the Ninevites, upon being warned, turn back to you. And yet there's a middle piece here almost that we're missing because we, we're coming into Nahum and we see Nineveh being up for destruction. And, and there's no redemption in here. There's no blessing in here. There's no, if you do this, if you, if you come back to me, you'll be saved. There's just judgment in Nahum. There's no possibility for a chance here. You have decided the fate of Nineveh, who obviously has turned away from what we saw in Jonah. And we see it so bad that you have chosen to have Nineveh not exist anymore. And what's fascinating to me is, is Nahum talks about the people coming in to destroy uh, Nineveh 
and they're so excited to do so that the that the guys in charge are so excited to destroy the city that they almost forget to give instructions to the soldiers and the soldiers are tumbling over each other to come in and destroy uh, the city of wealth and we know from archaeology digs that Nineveh was completely destroyed uh, sheer devastation uh, evidence of huge fires just like Nahum talked about so what happened how did we go from Jonah and this amazing change of heart to Nahum and we see his voice of judgment coming from you on this wealthy city so what happened in the in-between time I think about that a lot because our lives mimic Nineveh. We can be on fire for you, God. We can be reading our Bible daily in prayer. We can be talking to other people about you. We can just have it all going on. And then usually bit by bit, we suddenly find ourselves skipping days of reading the Bible and not talking to you as much and uh, finding a worldly things have become more important than doing the things of you and then one day ah, we're too tired to get out of bed to go to church and it just doesn't seem important anymore if we are all being truthful we've all gone through those times where we seem to lose this passion that we have for following you and so what happened between Jonah and Nahum what happened in that gap what happens in the gap in our lives when we go from sheer delight and intense excitement about being in your world and doing your will to almost an apathy at the thought of you and your word? What happens in that gap? Very rarely is it one big thing. Even if it's one big thing, like uh, when my best friend was killed a few years ago, it, it rarely is one big thing that changes your heart. Usually there's a bunch of little things already in place. And when that one big thing happens, it's just too much. And because we choose not to rely on your strength and we choose to rely on our own strength, we fall away. And that apathy starts to happen. I think the scariest part, God, is it's all these little tiny things. It's all these little tiny decisions that eventually we're at this point where we're lost and we're without you. And, and we're really kind of baffled as to how we got there. But we're there. And it feels like our feelings are very valid that we're not going anyplace else. <laughs> that we're just going to hang out without you, without your word. I hate those times when my life gets like that. But I'm also a person who tries to figure things out. And when my life gets off track like that, when I realize I'm, I'm back to Nineveh part two, and I'm sure your heart is breaking for me, and thankfully you're not destroying me, I look back on my life and try and figure out what caused me to get there. Because it didn't happen overnight. And it truly is every single time a bunch of little choices. And they're not even little choices. That's, that's actually wrong of me to say. They're little selfish choices. Every time I choose something that I want over what you want, it chips away at that passion I have for being in a relationship with you. And it chips away and it chips away. Just like our relationships we have here on earth. If you're in a marriage and you do a bunch of little selfish choices eventually you're going to feel very far apart and it's going to seem almost impossible for the two of you to come back together maybe you made a, a small choice to um, come home late one too many times because you were having fun with the guys after work maybe your girlfriends always needed you you thought more so than your husband or your kids did. And so you took that one more phone call because you wanted to feel wanted. 
I don't know, God, I know that there's a million little things that we choose. And we never see this great big huge gap coming, like between Jonah and Nahum. But suddenly we're in the middle of it. And thankfully, unlike what Nahum's talking about with Nineveh, where there is no redemption, there is no blessing, we do have redemption. We are never truly lost when we wander selfishly away from you. You constantly seek for us to come back to you. You empower us. You give us your strength. You give us your desires to do what pleases you. You are delighted to be reunited with us. So I know every time I get in that gap and I feel so lost, almost dizzy because I'm not really sure how I got there or even where I'm at anymore. And it's so hard to even pray to you again because I've, I've been away from that relationship for a length of time. I know just that tiniest cry for help. Show me the way, God. Show me just one step. I just, I just need help. I need you, God. And suddenly this gigantic gap between the Nineveh of Jonah and the Nineveh of Nahum is completely closed. And I am in your arms once again, God. Because of your grace, because of your mercy. And in that process, there's usually discipline coming out of amazing love you have for me to teach me how to quit making some of those choices. <laughs> and once again, it's all about you instead of about me. God, I thank you today for not destroying us, even though we deserve it multiple times every day. I have no doubt. Well, I can only speak for me, but... But instead of destroying us because of our sinful ways, you gave us your son. You gave us his death on the cross for our sins. Our choices we make, the little tiny selfish ones as well as the big ones. You gave us his death on the cross for the forgiveness of those sins. So we do have redemption within you. We do have the blessing of a relationship with you. And we do have salvation, eternal salvation, because of your grace. God, I thank you that right now, there's not a big gap in my life. That right now, I feel incredibly close to you. I love learning. I love walking in your path. But sadly, I know that I will start to make tiny, selfish choices and suddenly I'll be in that gap again. And God, I pray when I get to that point that you will show me that glimmer of light that shows me that path out of that situation. You promise that you will always show us that. God, if there's people listening right now who are in that gap, according to your will, according to your timing, help them out of that gap. Don't leave them there for Satan and his hordes of demons to be so excited, trampling over each other to get to that person to show them all the sparkly ways they can continue to stay in that gap away from you, God. Don't allow them to be like Nineveh, completely destroyed and never rebuilt again. Allow them to fill the overwhelming shower of your love and your grace and your sovereignty that you get to choose what happens to places like Nineveh and people like me who make wrong choices? That you are a God of love and justice. And although we do deserve to be destroyed like Nineveh, you choose to reconcile with us. 
teaching us, guiding us, allowing us to become the people you created us to be. God, I, I hate how I end up in those gaps. But I am incredibly thankful for those gaps because I learned so much about me in them. I learned so much about my relationship with you and I definitely learned tremendous amounts about who you truly are, God. As I glorify you coming out of that gap. God, thank you for the opportunity of redemption and forgiveness of our sins to close that gap. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.